It is not Wednesday, my dudes, which somehow means it's still time for a first thoughts and initial impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on West Wind Executioner Shuri, who was just shown last night over on YouTube. As with all of these first thoughts and initial impressions videos, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think Shuri's good? Where would I play him? What types of equipment sets and artifacts are good on him? All of those things that you've come to expect from a first thoughts and initial impressions video. Anyways, let's not waste any more time and check out Shuri's S3 animation. Can you feel it? Judgment's touch carried by the west wind. Extravagant things tend to be beautiful. Soon, I'll be the best in this city. Man literally blew the roof off the place. Anyways, in the English dub of Epic 7, West Wind Executioner Shuri, as well as all other versions of Shuri and Terra Norgard are voiced by Giancarlo Sabogal, who you could also hear in Marvel's Midnight Suns, as well as the game Psychonauts 2. Moving on to West Wind Executioner Shuri's stats, he is a four-star Dark Ranger of the Gemini Zodiac symbol, which means he shares a stat line with Roaming Warrior Leo. Taking a closer look at his stats, he has 1,088 attack, 553 defense, 5016 health, 111 speed, 15% critical at chance, 150% critical at damage, 18% starting effectiveness, and no starting effect resistance. This translates to pretty much just balanced stats across the board. The Gemini Zodiac symbol is known for having relatively balanced stats. Nothing here stands out as like super amazing uh, or you know super lacking for that matter. Some of the stats might seem a little bit low, but that's just due to the fact that Shuri is a four-star character. The big thing to take note here, though, is the imprints on West Wind Executioner Shuri. He has a 10-speed imprint for the team, as well as effectiveness as his self-imprint. Speed imprint is the most valuable team imprint in the game, and regardless of the kit that we're going to be talking about in just a second, the fact that he has a 10-speed imprint for the entire team makes him invaluable for cleavers and hyper aggressive players. Moving on to the actual kit, you know how we already do it. We talk about all three skills first and then we'll do the breakdown on the character as a whole. First up, skill two passive, operational readiness, increases the effectiveness of Shuri by 20 to 30%, depending on Malagora. When attacking, cannot trigger a critical hit. At the start of the battle, grants explosives to the ally in the back row, except for Shuri, so you obviously can't have Shuri in the back row and have him give himself his own buff. Explosives is an undispellable buff that says after attacking, plants a bomb on the target for two turns, dispelled after attacking. Do note, if you use an AoE attack, it will plant a bomb on all targets for two turns. Skill 3 is Merciless Execution. You acquire three souls upon use, and it has a four-turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies with a 75-100% to chance, depending on Malagora, to inflict two burns on all enemies for two turns. And at the end of the turn, detonates burn effects and bombs inflicted on the target. And finally, we come to the basic attack skill, which is Overpower. Attacks the enemy and has an 85-100% to chance, depending on Malagora, to burn for one turn. When skill 3 is unavailable due to cooldown count, activates Annihilate instead of Overpower. Annihilate attacks the enemy, burning them for one turn, and detonates burn effects at the end of the turn. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls, inflicts an additional burn effect for one turn. So regardless of whether or not you get Overpower or Annihilate, you will get that additional burn effect. As far as I can tell, there is no difference between Overpower and Annihilate in terms of raw damage. It's just that Annihilate has a built-in detonation on it. Before we actually break down and analyze West Wind Executioner Shuri's kit, I want to take some time to talk about my track record in these impressions videos. I've been making them for almost three years at this point. During that time, I'd like to think that you watching this, my audience, perceive me as someone with a fairly good and consistent track record when it comes to predicting a unit's viability. I've been right on the money on several characters when others in the community were really down on them. Characters such as Bellion, Ikarina, and more recently, Dragon King Sharoon. Tristan Wolf asked me before, how was it that I was so consistently on point with my predictions in these first impressions videos? I owe it all to years of drafting card games at a very high level. Drafting in card games requires you to assess the value of a given card in just a few seconds time before deciding if you want to pull the trigger on it or pass it up. That said, those are usually just gut feelings. 
You can't really 100% ascertain the value of a card, or in this case, a hero, until you play with it. A lot. West Wind Shuri is, make no mistake, a cleave or an aggro unit. I can absolutely tell you that much from taking a look at the kit. My track record, though, as a player with cleave and aggressive units, it's a lot more shaky than those of the turn two playstyle. And that is largely because me, myself, I don't really play these archetypes all that often. You need only to go back and watch my terribly embarrassing review of Wandering Prince Sid to see how off the mark I can be sometimes when it comes to really fast aggressive units. I've spent a good chunk of time though in this current World Arena season dedicating myself to being a more aggressive player so I could provide my audience with more accurate feedback, even if my win rate suffers terribly as a result. New Moon, Luna, and Zeo are in my top three most played units this season. If those two units don't scream that I'm trying to learn more about the aggressive playstyle, then I don't know what does. Basically, if I'm way off the mark on this character, don't crucify me. Anyways, at a glance, West Wind Executioner Shuri appears to be an enabler for a new cleave archetype. One that we may not necessarily need, but I could see how the developers arrived here. Parsetti and Imperian Illinab make it harder to use Eternal Wanderer Ludwig, who has been the poster child of Cleave for the last year or so. Veronica makes it harder to use characters like Bloodblade Corinne. Designer Lilibet makes it harder for you to use AoE defense breaker openers like Briar Witch Asaria to start your Cleave. That last category, though, I think that's where Shuri really shines and is his niche. Bombs can only be dispelled, not have their cooldowns reduced, meaning these kinds of cleavers don't have to worry as badly about designer Lilibet, who's pretty much everywhere after her most recent round of changes. Playing him seems pretty straightforward. Place a fast or powerful AoE attacker in the back slot to take advantage of explosives, have Shuri follow up behind it, then use Merciless Execution to destroy the entire team in one fell swoop. Araminta and Silverblade Araminta seem like obvious choices for explosives since they come with a ton of burn stacks for Shuri to detonate, along with crowd control in order to set up your cleave. A fast Bellion might also be a pretty fun character to try in this slot. I've seen them be used a lot in Arena and Guild Wars, and if you have her, then you don't have to pre-banner, so that's obviously always going to be a plus for cleave players. Parsetti also. Seems like she'd be pretty disgusting with this character, all things considered. You just put her in the back, give her explosives, press S3. That's a lot of debuffs for you to detonate. Seems pretty good. Summertime Asaria and Jacko Valentine also look like an excellent supporting cast to pair with Shuri. Chains of Chiron and explosives on the same unit that's placed in the back. That's going to be absolutely disgusting. And obviously any AoE attackers that you use will generate Asaria's S2 and allow her to pop off, especially now after her amazing exclusive equipment. I don't see enough players talking about that thing. I could absolutely see somebody pick something like Zeo, Briar Witch Asaria, West Wind Executioner Shuri, Araminta, and Jacko as a team, and just wiping the enemy off the face of the earth. Even Wandering Prince Sid seems like he'd be a pretty solid character to choose with Shuri. As for how we built the character... I think this character is pretty straightforward. Speed and hit set are pretty much going to be your go-to sets for the character, unless you want to, you know, consider attack set for bigger bomb damage, but I think I'm only going to consider that if I have, like, crazy high speed on an attack set for some reason. As for the artifact, Guiding Light seems like it's going to be the go-to because, you know, it's a staple on Rangers at this point. That said, Executioner Shuri can't really crit, so... Star of the Deep Sea or Seal of Capture, those seem like they could be a pretty good option. Finally, we have Sashay at Thanes because it's a tried and true cleaver artifact. But in this instance, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be the best option because from how I envision things, if somebody dies, everyone's dead. So we're not really going to get that kind of tempo play that Sashay is known for. Overall, I expect Shuri to be a fairly competent cleave option, especially because he has that coveted 10-speed team imprint. His multipliers are very good, and he slots in with a bunch of characters aggressive players already want to be playing. 
I think he'll be fairly good at launch, but I worry about how he'll function in a few weeks' time once we get young Senya. I think she'll be a pretty big roadblock for him and teams that want to use him. If you want to roll for Shuri, honestly, I don't think it can hurt. Just make sure that you set your Mystic Summon banner to Moonlight 4-star Pity so as to not waste your Moonlight 5-star Pity that you have saved up. Again, all in all, seems like a pretty good option for Cleavers to have access to. And those are my thoughts on Westwind Executioner Shuri. But now I want to hear from you. What do you think of Shuri? Do you think he's good? Do you think he's bad? How do you intend to play him? What kinds of sets? What kinds of characters do you plan on pairing him with? Any and all thoughts would love to hear from you down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, like or subscribe helps out a ton. And enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later now.